Okay, so here's my little bracket. And when it's all said and done, it's going to mount up sort of like that. Um, I didn't need to cut this edge. Um, as you can see, I clamped the bar stock on here. And if I put the plate flat on the mounting plate, there's just a very slight lip. So instead of trimming that off and maybe screwing it up, I'm going to leave it on for now. And as long as there's not a significant lip there that will catch on the camera, I'm just going to leave it as is. Uh, so next up, I need to put these two bolts or screw holes in. Um, I know the size of the screw and I know they're 31 millimeters apart. Uh, just looking up the motor, it's a standard MEMA. MEMA 17. So I'm going to center the two holes in the plate this way and then just measure down from the top to place them this way or this way. Once that's done, I'll probably have to cut the chunk of this because once this is mounted, I'll know the distance from this surface up to this surface and then drill holes to mount that. So I'm going to go drill some holes and I'll cut back in once I get that done. Okay, so I got my little plate here all drilled out, and if I didn't screw up, it should be centered between the two bolts, which by where the screw holes are, it looks about right. And it should be just a little bit off of the pulley. And the top of this plate's flush with the top of the carriage. Yeah, I think I'm within margin of error. So that looks pretty good. So next I need to cut this piece down to fit between those two points. Um, it's getting pretty late, so I'll probably cut it. I may trim it tonight, or I may just wait until another day when I have more time. Um, I probably will not get to drilling it. So, that's zero. So from the bottom to this top plate, by pure random luck is five inches, give or take. So. I'm probably going to cut this off five and an eighth so I have a little bit to trim off each end to clean up the saw cuts and we'll call it good. So there's five and an eighth. That side's been saw cut, so is that one. I'm going to cut it off long of that line quick on the bandsaw and then take a couple cleanup passes with the end mill on it. Um, this is definitely long so I'll do a really short pass on the first end and then when I come to do the other pan end I'll dial in the, cu the cutting until it's exactly five inches long. Which sheer luck from here to here is five inches. Didn't plan it, just worked out that way. Then I gotta drill two holes through this plate and two holes into the end of this, which will be really fun. And also, this hole I'll probably transfer to this plate so I don't have to guess. Um, I could measure down from here or up from there, but it's if I can figure out how to do it, transferring the hole will be the ideal method. So I'll put a flathead screw through here to bolt in there to I don't care what's into the end of this. And what else do we need to do? Oh, and then I need to make the two clamps to actually hold this camera in here to this plate. Um, I got two different styles I could go with. I can either just do a block with a round hole that slides through and a set screw, or I can do the block with a round hole and cut a slit and then have a side a screw through the slit so that when I tighten the screw, the whole block crimps down on this guy. Um, that's the more secure of the two methods, but it's also the most work. 
I don't think I really actually need that, so I might not do that, but get this done first, then I'll come back and think about that. So, I'm going to go cut this and trim the ends. Um, I may cut in and do some more tonight, but it's pretty late, so this might be the end of it for tonight. Okay, so I cut it out and machined it down. And we're at 5.005. So that is well and good enough for what this is doing. And in theory, this will end up right like that. Um, it is tilted slightly upward at the top right now. there is where it should actually go. I don't have a good way of transferring that distance, so I'm just going to end up having to clamp the bottom somehow here. There it goes. So we'll clamp this like so. Um, it, is, it is free to float, so this is going to be Oh, something's crooked. So, with the bottom clamped flush to the top of that block, the top is tilted too far this way and it's hitting these guys. So, obviously, something is crooked somewhere. causing that bottom block to tip. Or, the bottom block's not square. That could be as well. Um, for what I'm doing, that doesn't matter so much. So I'll probably just put a big square on the table, square this plate up quick, and see where it lands. And then I can go back and try and figure out what I screwed up on this block. It could also be just this clamp, the since the heads are rubber on it. It will tend to try and flux around a bit. Okay, so that's about the best I can do there. Now, yes, I'm making the big assumption that the bed and the carriage are square to each other. I can check that quick, actually. Um, they're they're actually pretty square to each other, so. I don't have to worry about that. So I'm going to come in like so, and then pull this out until it's square going up and down. Which, as I thought, is past the end of the plate. So I think I'm going to make it flush to this plate just because it makes all the numbers work out easy. And then I'm going to have to try and figure out why that bottom is so far off. When I made that part, this surface and this surface was square to each other, but something's causing that thing to tip this way. I wonder if I got something caught underneath it. Um, it's really tough to see what's going on under there, just because of everything in the way. And it doesn't look like I have a good mirror. This is nice and flush. I don't know exactly why that's tipped the way it is. There, there's no obvious reason for it at this time. So, I'm going to have to do some more work to investigate that. Yeah, it's tipped just slightly that way, which causes everything to go out of tilt. My stock is flat. That's the other thing it could have been. So, the big question is do I pull this block out because it was kind of a pain in the butt to get in in the first place? Or do I leave it and just deal with it? I'll probably. Yeah, let's just pull it out. English and the cap screws. 
cap, cap screws. So top to the back side looks pretty damn square. And back side to the wings is a little tougher to figure out. That's pretty darn square right there. Same with that. So, huh. Obviously, I must have had something pinched behind it so that when I tightened the screws, this whole thing just tipped up a little bit. Now, I wonder if I had to cut so that square. Oh, I bet I know what it is. I bet you that slot, these, when I tighten down the screws, these actually got sucked into the slot. So there's just not enough overhang on this top. So as it tightened down, the whole thing just did this number. So how am I going to fix that? One, I'm not going to tighten it into the slot again because that was a bad idea. Well, I'm not going to tighten it in the slot until I'm ready to assemble the whole thing. So we'll get this attached to here, this attached up here, like so, and once this point and that point secured, then I'll put the bolts in the back. To and then when this tries to tip, it'll actually push against the bolt hole in this piece and keep it from doing this number. You know, it'll just be locked in there unless it causes this plate to flex which hopefully I won't put that much force on it. I might go ahead and do these two pieces together or do up this connection which is just drilling and tapping that hole into this and putting a flathead screw in it because then I can use that whole assembly to figure out where these go. Um, yeah, I'll go do that. Back in a bit. Okay, so I've drilled a clearance hole for a 1024. Clean up my mess. And I got a flathead 1024 screw here. And if I didn't screw up too badly. This should end up being flush on the bottom. Oh, that's pretty close. Unfortunately, the head of the screw sticks out of the bottom a little bit. And it shouldn't affect the operation of anything. But if it does, I can just sort of hit it quick with a file and take it off. So now, in theory, if I clamp that like that, our top plate is just slightly too short, or my top plate. So I'm going to tip it in a little bit, which will tip the camera out a little bit. But I should be able to take that care of that in calibration, I would think. And it's such a slight angle change, it really shouldn't make a difference. I mean, it's like that versus that. So, next I need to take this plate off, 
figure out what my spacing between my holes going into the end are. Drill them, drill them, tap them, and then put this whole mess together. Uh, I think those are going to end up being number fours, which aren't the easy, well, it's pretty easy to break the tap at that size, especially since these are going to be blind holes. So I don't think I'm going to take that on tonight. So I'm going to call it here. Oops. Call it here for the night. And then I'll pick this back up again next week or this weekend when I have some more free time. Oh, exploded view. So yeah. Coming along uh, with any luck, the next well, the next time I have time to work on this, I'll definitely get that plate mounted in there. And with any luck, I'll get the two brackets to hold the camera, including the set screw to lock the focus adjustment knob. Which, which is this guy right here. So this whole thing should end up being right about there. There'll be a little... I'll have to think about that. There's no reason that I can't make my mounting blocks a little t my mounting blocks this go in a little taller, which then would put the camera right on center line with the pick and place heads in at least one of the axes. I don't think there's any reason why it has to be, but that might be just the way to go. Well, either way, I'm done for tonight, and I'll pick up next time. Laters.